this one, Joey. Let's go over and check him out. Let's face it, contraband is being brought into this country in every conceivable way, shape, and form, through the air, over land, and by sea. Operation Alliance is a unique response to this bombardment. First, because it's a coordinated response involving over 20 federal agencies, as well as state and local law enforcement officers. Secondly, because Alliance works. Covering the U.S.-Mexican border, including adjacent waters in the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific, the participating agencies under the umbrella of Operation Alliance have brought to justice countless traffickers of contraband, no matter what methods were used. Due to these successes, maritime smugglers are turning now more than in the past to utilizing concealed compartments to hide their contraband. While some of these compartments are incredibly crude and therefore easy to locate, many are extremely sophisticated and consequently difficult to detect. The trick is to think like a smuggler thinks, to act when they react, to respond to each new concealment method with an equally effective detection strategy. It's a tough order, particularly when dealing with marine vessels. It doesn't take an expert to realize that there are hundreds of types of marine vessels, and each one with its own potential for concealment, its own peculiar compartments, voids, and spaces. Even a smaller craft such as this, for instance, has dozens of potential hiding places for illegal drugs. Smugglers know it. That's why the use of concealment has increased in recent years, especially aboard smaller marine vessels. This program will show some of the various methods used by traffickers to conceal contraband aboard such vessels. More importantly, we'll show you some common and not so common clues that may indicate hidden compartments, clues to help you keep pace with a smuggler. Vessel here has been making a lot of noise around here, and he seemed like they have a lot of money, buy up a lot of supplies. What time did they come in, Harry? Oh, last evening. Pete, that looks like both customs looking for. Why don't you call dispatch and have customs meet us here? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, well. Notice these sport fishermen chose an unlikely dock, one that usually caters to a commercial fishing fleet. Then, Consider the fact that they're paying cash hey, for their supplies and flashing it around, not your average pleasure boater's behavior. Observations like these should put you on the alert. How oh, well they make contact, customs isn't right. OK, let's go talk to the captain. As our law enforcement officers near the vessel, note how nervous the boaters seem at their approach. Good morning, officer. What can I do for you? When first boarding a vessel, expect the unexpected. Look for things that seem out of place or illogical. One of our officers has noticed the gear looks unused. And what's an electric drill and paint rags doing on deck? You mind if we uh, come aboard and look around? Uh, no, sir, come on aboard. Uh, we've got nothing to hide. Don't be put off if the crew cooperates. Many times they will, either confident that the drugs can't be found or content to plead ignorance if they're discovered. 
Lieutenant, thanks for the call. Rotting fish are found inside a cooler. Yet these fishermen have just returned from an outing. During the galley search, scratch marks are observed near the refrigerator, apparently from moving it back and forth. This could indicate a hidden compartment behind the appliance. Another potential concealed space is discovered on deck. Fresh fiberglass and new paint tip offs the vessel has been recently altered. This officer's hunch is correct, and a seizure is made. But the story doesn't end here. That vessel has been confiscated. Later, it'll be sold, and the profit shared by the departments involved. It's a good haul, and it's due in large part to creative detection. What do we mean by creative detection? Well, basically it means taking an inquisitive approach to smuggling. For instance, take a look at this vessel. Note the double water line. One of these lines, the top one, has been painted on, so when the vessel is heavily loaded, it still appears to ride high. This is an old trick and not much used nowadays, but it could be a clue, and like any clue, useful only when it's identified as such. To help identify these clues, it's useful to classify them. They fall into roughly five categories. First, know your area. Know what's customary in your locale, such as fishing seasons and normal navigational routes. Second, become acquainted with the standard configurations of vessels in your area. Third, inspect the equipment on board for unusual characteristics and working condition. Fourth, check the vessel's load. Is there anything unusual about the way it's packed? Or is it proper cargo for the vessel? And finally, check all compartments paying particular attention to any potential sites for faults or hidden compartments. Now let's look at these categories one by one. Knowing an area means learning about the activities and behavior typical of the local population. It means knowing which types of vessels are common to the area and what they're used for. It means keeping track of fishing seasons, traffic patterns at area marinas, and learning about the behavioral characteristics of the area's residents, such as which ethnic groups are likely to be engaged in specific marine activities. Speaking of crews, don't forget to notice the number of people commonly involved in certain activities. For example, a commercial fishing vessel like this might employ two to four people. Many more could indicate potential criminal activity. It might be a vessel to watch. What it all comes down to is awareness. Watch for unusual behavior. The boat owner who pays in cash when credit is typical. The fisherman who never produces a catch. The shrimper that leaves with no ice in its hole. When you know your area, you can spot an inconsistency. And that puts you one step closer to exposing the smuggler's game. Another means to the same end is understanding vessel configurations. In other words, knowing what's norm for a particular type of vessel. Let's look at a few examples. Changes in hull configuration are common ways to disguise hidden compartments. Here's a vessel with a raised deck. Notice the poor spacing around the edges. As you enter the galley, note the length and distance between the first and second step. This tip-off should start you looking for access to a false compartment in the hull. Altered configurations can often be detected with the space accountability technique. This means measuring from bulkhead to bulkhead, stem to stern, all areas in fact, to detect missing footage. The key, of course, is knowing how much space should be available inside a particular vessel. This is general information, but it's important. For instance, it might tip you off to the change in this center console configuration. See how far aft this structure is? It could have alerted you to the false stern on this fishing vessel, or the fact that this vessel includes additional fuel tanks that could be used for smuggling. Nothing, however, takes the place of good old observation. Looking at this vessel, for example, you can see considerable damage to the outside hull. Dents, tire marks, scratches. Signs like these can indicate on and off loading activity with another vessel. A plate bolted onto the outside of the hull like this 
can indicate outside access to a false compartment. Then there's the presence of extra electronics like these, unusual on a pleasure craft, typical of smugglers. It's an observation that can help you target a potential drug trafficker. Attention to detail. Use it, especially when you're reviewing a vessel's equipment. Ask yourself these questions. Are these extra fuel drums and bladder tanks necessary? They could be if the built-in fuel tanks are being used to smuggle contraband or may have been used to travel a long distance. Is the equipment on board appropriate to this type of vessel? This drill and welding kit are not typically found on a pleasure craft like this. Is the equipment on board functional? The inside pulley is rusty and appears not to be used on this so-called shrimper. Does the vessel have the necessary equipment for its purpose? This charter boat is going out with enough fishing gear, but no bait. And this commercial fishing vessel has left port with no ice in its hold. Look for things that are out of place, a kind of what's wrong with this picture approach. Like the dozens of air fresheners scattered all over this vessel. Products like these are sometimes used to conceal the smell of illegal drugs. And what's wrong with this picture? Are these hoisting devices appropriate to this type boat? It's possible they're being used to haul contraband on board. So what's the final word on equipment? Make it curiosity. Inquire into discrepancies and check out anything that arouses your suspicions. Drug traffickers are a devious lot and not all contraband will be concealed in compartments. In some cases, drugs may actually be hidden in the vessel's load. Traffickers use fishing vessels like this so they can hide their drugs in its hold. The contraband is actually placed deep inside the ice. See? No smell, no residue. To check for drugs in these situations, you'll need some special tools. A wire probe can be inserted to check for solid materials. But what if the smuggler hides the contraband along with his catch? If there are other indicators of trafficking activity, it may be worthwhile to actually check a portion of the load. Because many vessels freeze their catch, you'll need tools to check the load. Here's a list of some other useful items. A three-quarter inch reversible drill for checking the tops and sides of various tanks. A tape measure to account for all usable space on a vessel. A telescoping mirror to search behind walls and appliances. A flashlight to check in dimly lit spaces. And a sounding tape or sounding rod to check fluid depths in various tanks. These are simple tools that are easy to use. Finding the access to false compartments, however, is a little more difficult. Contraband can be hidden in a variety of places on board a marine vessel. Fuel tanks, for instance, can be altered and false ones installed. A fuel transfer pump on board should tip you off that such a change may have been made. In fact, tanks of all sorts could and have been used to smuggle drugs. Saltwater conversion tanks, freshwater tanks, even ballast and waste tanks. Voids or space left unused by standard construction are commonly used by drug smugglers. Check for removed or improperly reinstalled factory equipment. And if there's still no sign of an access, a solid object can be used to sound out the space. False bulkheads and walls are other common sites for false compartments. Check for clues such as remnants of construction materials, fresh fiberglass, paint and nails, new or mismatched screws and fasteners on old walls or panels, and damage from moving objects outward from bulkheads. A lower than usual ceiling might indicate a hidden compartment overhead. Conversely, a raised deck can conceal a false compartment beneath. And don't neglect a vessel's standard storage areas. Check to see if these compartments have been altered. You may find the smuggler has installed a box within a box just to throw you off the scent. And finally, if you still sense contraband, be aware that some enterprising smugglers are attaching compartments on the exteriors of vessels. Running a line around and under the vessel might turn up some interesting results. Remember, 
U.S. Customs Law 19 U.S.C. 1703 states that any vessel altered specifically for smuggling purposes can be confiscated. That means it becomes part of an asset sharing program, and that means substantial gains for the departments involved. Well, now we've reviewed the five areas to consider when checking out a marine vessel for concealed contraband. But how do you put all this information together? Let's consider a likely situation. That's the boat over there. You see, it's mostly mixed crew, so it kind of caught our attention. And you say you've been watching them for a couple weeks now? Something just didn't seem right about them. They came in this morning with a name change, so we thought we'd call y'all and get any information on them. The initial approach to the vessel is critical for observation. This vessel does not appear to be a working boat. U.S. Customs, Captain, we're coming aboard. Come on aboard. I'd like to see your documentation for this vessel, all your paperwork. I'm going to do a border search. Have all your crew members and passengers get to the stern of the boat. Search wherever you want. If I can help you, let me know. Thank you. Again, friendly cooperation can be an attempt to discourage suspicion. As the search begins, notice the nervousness of the crew. Questioning them might yield answers which differ from the master's comments. One agent notes the whitish appearance of the winch cables an indication of infrequent use. Continuing his observations, he notices the rusty appearance of the inner pulley, normally shiny from line running through. The nets are dry and not maintained. Obviously, these nets haven't been in the water recently. So, what's under all that ice in the hold? An officer probes the ice for solid matter. Sure enough, this vessel hasn't been shrimping. Nonetheless, Disguised by the ice, this cocaine might still have gone undetected. Success was the result of two things, the curiosity of the officers and the alertness of the boarding party. So there you are. Faced with hundreds of ways to conceal contraband aboard marine vessels, your best resource is your own ingenuity. Just don't expect the smuggler to play by the same rules you do. As efforts to stem the tide of drugs become more successful, traffickers will devise even more sophisticated methods of concealment. Our strength must be in communication. As new concealment techniques arise, they need to be shared with the rest of the law enforcement community. Operation Alliance provides that conduit of information. It's a prime staging ground, not just for improved communication, but for our increased powers of observation. Together, we must begin to expect the unexpected, to think creatively when it comes to marine concealment. You can bet your life the smuggler will.